here goes nothing. This is a ride I'm really gonna enjoy. Woo! I'm right in the middle of the path now. This is amazing. Well, the show is called Ride and Seek, so of course there's a ton of riding. When you see all the riding shots in the show, you have no idea what it takes to get those shots. It's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of angles, a lot of different cameras. Once we find a good spot, we have to pull over. And of course, I immediately run from the bike into the van because I'm so hot. And I'm blasting the aircon on me while they set up the shot. Then when everybody's ready, I get back on the bike. And I not only have to ride it once, maybe three times. We've got to get the wide shot, the close shot, the drone shot. So every time you're seeing one of the riding shots, I'm probably riding that particular road about five times. <laughs> Feels so good to be back on the road again. One particular road that I remember being a little intimidated by was the chicken intestine road. It was a little bit scary going into it. At that time, I was riding the Kimco Exciting 400, which is a bit of a bigger bike for me. So I was worried I wouldn't be able to maneuver it so well. I had heard before I took this road that there were rumors that some people had died because of the dangerous tight turns on this road. There are even volunteers that help guide people through the road and stop traffic so they can make it a little safer. But once I got up there, it was actually pretty fun. The turns were like the tightest I'd ever been on. But the Kimco bike actually had really good handling, and I did pretty well. It was pretty fun. One of the most beautiful rides that I had shooting uh, throughout all four seasons was through Kalinga. Pulling over and stopping to take photos. In fact, the whole crew, half the time we were shooting and then the other half of the time we were just being tourists. So we would pull over and take in the great views of all the rice terraces and the valleys. It was just so lush and green and beautiful. And they would put the GoPro on me and say, go take off Jamie, and I would just be on my own riding. Those were some of the best moments. Because I'm on my own, I'm feeling the wind rush past me. I feel like I'm actually out exploring on my own. And I would pull off by myself with the crew way far behind me, and I'd have a quiet moment just taking in the scenery. It just, I don't know, it's a great feeling of exploring new places and, and being on the bike. A 
lot of the time when people stop and ask me about Ride and Seek or they recognize me on the street, they always say, I remember you. You're that girl that fell. <laughs> The director told me that we were going to ride to Maliao Basin, where it was kind of off-road for about, I don't even remember, like 20 kilometers or something like that. And I hadn't had a lot of off-roading experience, so it's a completely different feeling. Something that I was not sure how to do. And one thing I didn't realize before I did this was that the Ducati had street tires on it. And what I really needed to have on this bike were some dirt tires. Woo! So when I was riding on the trail, I was like, okay, I think I'm doing all right, I'm doing all right. No problem. The roads in Borneo are some of the toughest roads uh, I've experienced in all four seasons. And then up ahead, I see this big patch of mud. And I thought, uh-oh, this isn't gonna work. There's street tires, I'm just gonna slide right through here. And then before I could even finish that thought, I was on the ground. And the next thing I knew, it was the van coming, and I heard the running of feet, and there was the crew. And instead of saying, are you all right? They just put the camera there. <laughs> I just kept going with it. Yes, already noticed something right here. My shifter here, it's pretty bent. I see the grip came off of it. I'm not sure if that's gonna work, so I'll have to test that out. I just keep shooting, no matter what happens. It's starting to rain now. I'm hoping I get there before it really starts to come down. Oh man, this is seriously a big challenge for me. When I get there, I'm gonna be really proud of myself. Oh my God, I did it. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, that was seriously the craziest, most gnarly ride I've ever taken in my life. I was quite scared a few times. The first time I went down was definitely not my last. I made it here in one piece, but obviously my bike, poor thing, did not. season of Ride and Seek, there's some kind of interesting animal encounter. Hi guys, how are you? Don't be afraid, buddy. Please. Oh! <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, Choco. <laughs> oh, it's so disgusting. <laughs> I don't want it flying at my head. But Is going to be an unpredictable scene because you can't tell animals what to do. Uh, I gotta chase him? <laughs> he doesn't want him fast. So I have a lot of interesting moments. Amazing. I've really witnessed a real miracle. Chase! Forward, not backwards. And some pretty uncomfortable situations. Ready? No, okay. <laughs> I think you're supposed to walk. You don't want to walk? Okay, so I carry this one. I think it's season three. Um, we're going to be looking at pigs and artificial insemination. He's ready. He's familiarizing the dummy cell. And I thought, how am I going to explain that on camera? How am I going to explain why we're there and what we're shooting and what's going on while we're shooting? <laughs> checks out the dummy, which is really just a metal tube shape. Oh, uh, he's flirting with it. Yes. Up, 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 up. Oh, oh. She mounts. I swear sometimes I think the directors and producers are just trying to torture me by putting me in the most uncomfortable situations and laughing at seeing how I react to them. This is ready and we have to check it. <laughs> this is a little embarrassing to watch. So the fan is uh, oh. getting expanding. It will ejaculate for 8 to 10 minutes. 8 to 10 minutes? 
I just remember the pigs being really loud. So we brought the male in, the female's here waiting. And now they're just kind of checking each other out, getting to know each other. And you know, when they got right into the act of it, I was like, oh my god, I should not be in here. Like, this is kind of a private moment amongst pigs. <laughs> mating, that was pretty weird. And it's really loud in here. So sometimes it's really a challenge as a host to kind of make a situation fun and to kind of go with the flow in whatever's happening. Okay, well, I think I'll leave them to it. They don't need me here watching any longer. Bye, guys. The directors of Ride and Seek always want you to see my genuine reaction to whatever situation I'm in. So they'll always tell me just the, the least amount of info possible for any given situation. And my expectations are always different than what actually happens. So I was told I was going to a fish spa. <laughs> and I've been to a fish spa before. You put your feet in a little tub and these little tiny fish nibble at your toes and it tickles. This was not that kind of fish spa. <laughs> there was a sectioned off area with fish that were about this big. And I was told to jump in the water and go for it. <laughs> My body does hurt from riding on that bike a lot, so time for a full body massage. I'm scared. <laughs> so I jump in and it is like that fish spa with the tiny little fish on your feet, except they're giant fish and they're all over my body. My fingers were going in their mouths, they were getting in my life vest, they were splashing all over my face. I feel crazy! <laughs> After seeing the Carabao race, I was pretty game to try riding one of the Carabaos, and the crew thought it was all a good idea too. a little bit closer and realized that he probably wasn't in the best of moods. Oh. He started kind of freaking out a little bit, jumping around, and I thought, I don't know, if we're going to continue shooting the rest of this season, I might not want to get on that carabelle. I think he's a little worn out from all that racing. I'm probably better off sticking to my iron horse. Speaking of genuine reactions and surprises, when I was at the dairy farm in Borneo, I got to see a little bit and learn a little bit about cows and how to do a pregnancy test on a cow. Okay, so what is this area used for? I mean, you obviously have these cows separated for a reason. Uh, this is for uh, holding her rear if we want to do the artificial inseminations. Okay, so this is for all the pregnant mamas. So I was with the dairy farmer and he was telling me about how he goes about doing it and he pulls out this very long plastic glove. Oh, this is no. our glove, <laughs> yeah. I don't like how long that glove yeah. is. <laughs> you see That's the size of this thing? Yeah. Is that how deep you have to go? Yeah. <laughs> no. And I looked behind the camera at the director and I just went, no, no, no. And he was going. <laughs> you can try it. Well, I don't think I can. I can hold snakes, but I can't put my hand inside a cow. <laughs> and being game for anything, there I found myself putting the glove on and sticking my hand where it never had been before. <laughs> Your hand. 
Oh my god. <laughs> no, no, no. And then no. you need to pull slowly. Oh, I feel terrible doing this to her. Ah, oh, she's clenching on my hand. And I didn't know what to expect. Um, they didn't really tell me uh, what I should be looking for. I knew it was a pregnancy test, and so the dairy farmer had said that he's looking to feel for the fetus. <laughs> Once I stuck my hand in there, um, it was kind of like an empty cavern. <laughs> okay. Ah! <laughs> I was kind of like feeling around, like there's nothing in here. And then I hit like a wall, and I, I knew I was supposed to be looking for a fetus, but I, I don't know, it kind of, it freaked me out. <laughs> okay, I don't want to do it anymore. Once I was in there, I was like, okay, I've added up. Thank you, bye-bye. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> That's probably the grossest thing I've ever done. <laughs> excited when I hear our next location is at a beach. So I finally ridden my bike all the way to the beach. Now this is exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> wow, look at the view up here. Go. First of all, it's great because I'm usually on the road and we're usually all out in the sun, sweating and dirty. And when you're at the beach, it's always a lot cooler. We're wearing shorts, we're splashing around in the water. Some of my favorite scenes to shoot. But I do see some windsurfers out there and I think I can do that. But first, I'm gonna get my feet wet. One of the coolest beaches that I went to was um, on Survivor Island. After a 30 minute boat ride, I'm finally here at this beautiful island. Just check this place out. The beach was beautiful, it looked pretty untouched, and I had actually watched Survivor, so I was kind of a fan, having a fan moment. And then I got kind of deeper into the island and saw that they had these giant kimono dragons, like, just hanging out. <laughs> Whoa! There's like, I don't know, maybe 15. And I wanted to get a selfie, and I kept kind of creeping up, but every time I got close, I would hear one hiss or something like that, and I'd get freaked out, so I'd run away. <laughs> Not the best selfie I've ever taken. <laughs> I'd always heard about, like many people, the beaches in the Philippines being some of the best in the world. And one of the most famous ones of all would be Boracay. Boracay Beach has been named the best beach in the world. It's supposed to be this beautiful beach and it's a party island. So I was kind of excited to see if it could live up to its reputation. And sure enough, it did. As soon as I arrived, it was just beautiful. This crystal clear water is so enticing that I think it's time to get another perspective of the beach. So I was really excited to spend some time there. What I wasn't so excited about was shooting a mermaid scene. What the? Is that a giant fish? Not usually my thing. I'm hanging out with mermaids today. But once I got 
that tail on, which is kind of weird. You stick both your feet into a monofin, and then you wriggle up the whole body around you. And now I'm ready to join the other mermaids and learn a few tricks. And then you have to kind of crawl into the water. <laughs> when shooting the mermaid scenes, we first did a little practice run in shallow water. And that's where I learned how to swim with my feet together, kind of moving your whole body like a fish, like a mermaid. Where am I going? <laughs> That was a perfect handstand, Jamie. Yay! This is a mermaid club for you. And I felt pretty confident I could do it in the deeper water, so they took us out on a boat, and I got together with the other mermaids, and we were gonna shoot this scene underwater. What you have to do is put a weight belt on underneath that fish outfit, so that will weigh you down underwater, and you can shoot the scenes easier. Once you get down there, there's a regulator, so you can breathe in some air, swim around, shoot some scenes, and then come up. But the problem with that is, is you're still wearing the weight belt. And the current was really strong when I was shooting there, so I came up, and I'm grasping for the boat, but the weight belt kept weighing me down. Literally, it's like swallowing water, and I was like, uh, I think I actually need help. Help? Help? <laughs> so that was the only time I was worried for like just a moment. <laughs> but once you're in there, it's kind of cool to swim like a fish. I think I was pretty good at it in the end.